Chinese Traditional Medicine. Part 1. Chinese Medication and, Though Health and Healing at the Common Goals of Chinese Medication TCM and, Their Ideas on the Etiology of Sickness, Dis Traditional Chinese Medicine and Infertility. Although health and healing at the common goals of ancient Chinese medication TCM and medical care medication, their ideas on the etiology of sickness, sickness itself and therefore the method accustomed regain health are unquestionably completely different. The medical care doc learns that sickness should be cured by prescribing medication, that kills microorganism or renders a pestilence ineffective, from time to time surgical intervention could be a necessity. There is nothing inherently wrong with this approach. It often works. The question price exploring is why TCM succeeds wherever medical care medication fails? What is the mechanism of action of stylostixis and flavoring medication, which ends up in palliation or cure that's not manifest in biomedicine? Though the goal of TCM is to cure a patient, the doctor of TCM tries to try to do this not by treating the sickness however rather by treating the full person, taking under consideration the varied attributes of a personal that, once combined, account for a personal being sick or healthy. A person, in keeping with the tenets of TCM is quite their pathology. While treating the pathology could yield spectacular results, they're usually temporary. A person isn't, in keeping with TCM, delineated alone by his or her health problem, however by the buildup of each human interaction engaged in from the instant of birth, including the values of and therefore the culture from that the individual develops. The emotional experiences, intake habits, work habits, work and living surroundings, personal habits and therefore the social surroundings are factors that contribute to sickness and are factors that, once changed appropriately may lead to regained health. Though the Western scientific community has not, to date, found a strategy to use in analysis of Chinese medication, the truthfulness and effectivity of this medical modality is nevertheless proved by its long history of continued success. More than one quarter of the world's population frequently uses TCM as a part of their health care program. Chinese medication is that the solely sort of classical medication, that is often and endlessly used outside of its country of origin. The four examinations. The four examinations could be a technique of identification that dates back over 3,000 years. Observing, listening and smelling listening and smelling are counted united of the four examinations, questioning and palpating structure the four examinations. This technique of identification is much from oversimplified, permitting the practitioner to make a medical diagnosis. Each of the four examinations will take years to master, and whereas these diagnostic tools don't seem to be replacements for that that Western medication will give in analyzing and treating sickness, they have the power to supply info that, once understood within the context of TCM, provides extra opportunities in mapping out patterns of sickness and inbound at larger treatment success. The doctor of TCM should approach a patient with a transparent and calm mind, without a preconceived diagnosis and etiology. This mindset can modify the practitioner to yield clinical gems that are clues regarding the individual United Nations agency sits before us. This is the stuff of TCM. The subjective, instructive and objective proof of a private obtained via the four examinations results in the invention of the etiology of malady whereas concomitantly gap a window to the whole person, therefore revealing where inside the individual's life the organic process started and what initiated it. The professional person of TCM should utilize his own instructive skills, which takes into consideration what is verbalized by the patient and what is observed, while considering what the patient does not verbalize as well. Often, that that isn't aforementioned will be as clinically enlightening because the data that is freely provided. The tone of the voice, the complexion, the condition of the eyes in TCM, the shen or spirit of an individual is said to be revealed through their eyes. Who can deny the clinical efficacy of this? Is there a special expression discovered through the eyes of a clinically depressed individual than from those of a cheerful, well-adjusted one? The facial expression, the overall demeanor, how one walks, sits, and stands are all observed and utilized by the doctor of Chinese medicine as part of the information required to arrive at a differential diagnosis. The doctor should be ready to note and sense inconsistencies in a private that are expressed by the patient even while not the patient being cognizant of the chasms that exist between what they verbally categorical and what their non-secular presentation divulges. 
The sensitivity to associated awareness of those human idiosyncrasies permits the TCM doctor to develop an understanding of WHO the patient is even before the main complaint is mentioned. Proper treatment in TCM is quite the elimination of pathological processes. In addition to attacking a pathological factors, it's the responsibility of the TCM doctor to support the individual in his or her goal of achieving overall health that includes aspects of physical psycho-emotional and spiritual health. This paradigmatic approach is an inexorable part of the process of healing. Without it, we are merely chasing the sickness and forgetting about the patient. With this approach, the patient is seen as a full person, representing the total of a life of experiences if you may, not just an embodiment of pathology. Pathologies are guests and we tend to hope temporary ones, in an exceedingly home that is a gracious host, our physical, emotional and spiritual selves. TCM first worries with strengthening the immune perform which has physiological state of the physical, emotional and non-secular attributes of the patient, so as to be able to assist the patient in his or her endeavor to try to, to battle and destroy the enemy at the gates or within them. When individuals are inveterately exhausted from lack of sleep ensuing from anxiety or depression, they will become inveterately sick as a result of a lowered system. In TCM the purpose of departure from Western drugs isn't to look at the acute presentation called the branch in TCM as primary, but to treat the etiology called the root in TCM which is the anxiety and depression which causes the insomnia then facilitating exhaustion and lowering the immune function which can lead to chronic illness. So, rather than prescribing antibiotics repeatedly, we'd address the patient's anxiety, depression syndrome or refer them then to clinical psychologist for applicable intervention whereas at the same time providing treatment. In part 2 we'll check up on the mechanisms of action in sterility.